objective of this paper is to develop an extremely low-cost microwave uh, imaging sensor capable of providing a 3D microwave image of the target scene. Um, as it is today, you can buy a less than $10 microwave radar device, but it only provides you range, Doppler, and time. It cannot provide you uh, time, angle, angle. It does not provide a 3D solution. This limits the use of radar sensors in modern low-cost technology, such as unmanned aerial vehicles, or unmanned vehicles of all types. Um, other things such as self-driving cars, things like uh, you know, putting these in gaming devices. All sorts of consumer devices could benefit from an extremely low-cost, three-dimensional radar system. And that's what the Pinhole camera is. Okay, so here we have a, um, a microwave pinhole camera. So what you're looking at right now is the aperture of the pinhole camera. It's a hole about four and three quarters of inch diameter and it's cut into this uh, aluminized uh, sheet. And if you look over here, we have the, um, this is the receive element. It's about as isotropic as you can get. Just cut the end off of a waveguide. This is a WR90 uh, section of waveguide. Uh, so this thing's operating at 10 gigahertz. Uh, here's an absorber that's uh, around the waveguide itself to reduce multipath. Um, down here you have the um, elevation drive. This is rather the y-axis drive. It pulls uh, this belt here that moves the, uh, the waveguide up and down. And all along here you have a very long x-axis driven by that motor down there. Uh, and then over here you have the uh, radar back end that I like to use for everything. Down, down at the very, very bottom is the uh, YIG oscillator chirping 5 gigahertz centered around 10. So this, this camera also provides uh, time of flight information. Um, above that you have the radar control chassis. It's now controlling uh, two uh, axis. Then you have a trigger oscillator and you have a lab view with a PCI 6014 data acquisition card. And right now it's running and providing the time of flight uh, information, time of flight and amplitude between the microwave source, which is on the other side of that screen, and the Waveguide Pro. All right, so here we are on the other side of the pinhole. And this is the uh, microwave source. This is one of the wideband FMCW radar devices I've created. In this case, I'm just using an open-ended waveguide as the source. And here's the rest of the radar. The, receive, um, the uh, receiver on the other side of the aperture actually feeds right into here. And it's correlated uh, with the frequency mixer amplified the video amp and then fed back to the radar control chassis. So this is where the, um, this is where the uh, de-chirping occurs and the, the uh, emission occurs here. And then here's a target. This is a cylinder, six inch uh, diameter. And so we have the cylinder fairly close to the aperture itself, and that's how I've been running this uh, device. And really, it's the goal here is a proof of concept. Uh, we're not looking to break any imaging uh, records, but um, it's just an interesting concept. So here we have the cylinder. We're going to radiate it with that guy and then uh, take a look at the result. So here's the device in action. You can see we're acquiring the time of flight data up here. That's the raw video data uh, right down there. And then here's the uh, y-axis coming down now. So it'll come down. X will move over. There it goes. And it'll scan. It's going at one inch increments both X and Y. Okay, so uh, we're going to try the three and three quarter inch uh, pinhole microwave camera. And uh, again, uh, here is the aperture. This time it's a little bit uh, smaller. And we'll have the, uh, the source on the other side right over there.
as you can see here, the, there's a lot more uh, shielding on this side of the camera. So, okay, so here we've added, um, we put the radar or the emitter off to the side. We have three little four inch uh, pipes and then uh, added additional shielding uh, for the camera. So.